Rausbord ist Deutschlands ähm, ältestes E-Sports-Team und 2002 in Berlin gegründet. Hervorgegangen aus einem Zusammenschluss aus fünf Berliner Jungs, die zusammen Counter-Strike gespielt haben, die dann so beim Spielen gemerkt haben, wie gut sie eigentlich sind und ähm, über diesen Weg dann zu ersten nationalen Events gefahren sind, da wieder gut abgeschnitten haben, dann internationale Erfolge hatten und so ist Mausports eigentlich das traditionellste deutsche E-Sports-Team. Da unsere Ambitionen grundsätzlich ja sind, in der absoluten Weltspitze mitzuhalten, sind unsere Ambitionen natürlich auf jeder Ebene sehr, sehr hoch. Nicht nur spielerisch, was die taktische Vorbereitung angeht, sondern auch was die mentale, die körperliche Vorbereitung angeht. Ich glaube, den Teams wird immer bewusster, wie wichtig das ist. Weil gerade an der Spitze unterscheiden sich die Mannschaften halt vor allem nur noch in Nuancen. Und da geht es dann halt vor allem darum, wer kann länger die Konzentration aufrechterhalten. Wer ist nach zwei Stunden Spiel noch in der Lage, absolute Spitzenleistung abzurufen und ich glaube da äh, kommen dann diese Faktoren eben ins Spiel, wenn du körperlich auf der Höhe bist, wenn du Ausgleich betreibst, Sport betreibst, dich gesund ernährst, dann hast du da eben nochmal die 3-4 Prozent, die du da rausholen kannst. Alle fünf, die Teil dieses Teams sind, müssen ein gemeinsames Ziel vor Augen haben, müssen bereit sein, gemeinsam dafür zu arbeiten. Müssen und ähm, das vergessen viele vielleicht oft ähm, in Kauf nehmen, dass andere Teile ihres Lebens vielleicht für den Moment zurückstecken müssen. Du bist sehr viel unterwegs. Du bist viel in Hotels, viel auf Turnieren und das muss man eben verarbeiten können, dem Erfolg nicht unterordnen. Dann muss man eben jemand sein, der sehr kommunikativ ist in der Regel. Also in so einem Spiel muss du dir vorstellen, da geht es um Timings, die sind auf die Sekunde genau abgepasst. Das heißt, man muss also in der Lage sein, Situationen sehr schnell zu erkennen und dann sehr schnell die richtige Entscheidung zu treffen und sein Mitspieler, der womöglich nicht die gleiche Landessprache spricht. Also wir haben ja ein sehr buntes Team aus Holland. Ähm, dann Finnen, äh, Tschechen, Polen. Also wir müssen sehr schnell dann miteinander kommunizieren und äh, das ist eine der Herausforderungen. Aber zusammenfassend kann man das, glaube ich, ganz gut unter. Man muss eine, eine echte Mannschaft sein, weil als Einzelspieler hast du hier tatsächlich gar keine Chance. Was macht ein E-Sport aus? Also ich sage jetzt mal, was macht einen absoluten Spitzenspieler aus? Oder wenn man jemand, wenn man Spitzenspieler werden will. Da kommen auch wieder sehr viele Faktoren zusammen und auch da kann man wieder sehr gut den Vergleich ziehen zum Fußball. Im Fußball sagt man ja auch, wenn man 20, 30 Prozent ist vielleicht Talent und alles andere ähm, eignet man sich an. Ist harte Arbeit, ist Vorbereitung, ist Reflektieren und genauso ist das bei uns auch. Es gibt so ein paar offensichtliche Positionen. Das ist einmal der Ansager, der sogenannte Ingame-Leader. Das ist meistens der, der in dieser Fünfer-Konstellation in der Mitte sitzt. Der ist eben jemand, der in der Runde die vorher ausgearbeiteten Taktiken, die vielleicht auch der Coach mitgeteilt hat, dann an die Spieler weitergibt und auch während das Spiel läuft, dann Entscheidungen trifft. Dann gibt es AWP-Spieler, Sniper-Spieler sozusagen, jemand, der eher aus der Entfernung versucht, die Runde zu eröffnen, vielleicht einen unvorsichtigen Gegner zu erwischen, sag ich jetzt mal. Dann haben wir eine Position, die genannt Lurker bei den, bei den Spielern, der eher sich nicht auf der Seite befindet, wo der Rest des Teams gerade einen Angriff vorbereitet, sondern versucht irgendwie hinter die gegnerischen Linien zu kommen, um dann denen sozusagen in den Rücken zu fallen. Es gibt eine Position, die sich Entry Fragger nennt, das ist sozusagen der Erste, der irgendwo um die Ecke kommt. Das ist eine sehr anfällige Position, weil die Gegner warten möglicherweise dort. Aber gleichzeitig auch eine sehr wichtige Position, weil man viele Informationen so sammelt. Und dann haben wir noch was, was sowas wie einen ähm, unterstützenden einen Supportspieler, jemand, der vor allem dafür da ist, eben die Starspieler im Team zu unterstützen mit Blendgranaten, Rauchgranaten etc. Ich finde, das ist eine der großen Stärken von E-Sports generell, 
dass eigentlich alle auf dem gleichen Spielfeld immer spielen, alle, alle die gleichen Grundvoraussetzungen haben. Äh, das ist egal, ob du jetzt in Deutschland bist, ob du in Brasilien bist, ob du in Asien bist. Äh, du kannst dich auf dem Counter-Sector einloggen, du kannst spielen, eigentlich unter den gleichen Bedingungen wie jeder andere auch. Äh, diese extrem niedrige sag ich mal, Zutrittsbarriere ist eigentlich das, was auch so ein bisschen die Leidenschaft von vielen Leuten in, in diesem Spiel ausmacht. Eigentlich funktioniert es genauso wie im traditionellen Sport oder sagen wir wie im Fußball. Ähm, wir sind momentan unter den Top 5 der Welt. Das heißt, wir sind ein, würde ich sagen, durchaus attraktiver Arbeitgeber für Counter-Strike-Spieler. Und wir scouten, wenn dann eine Position zu besetzen ist bei uns, scouten wir dann eben bei den Teams, die so vielleicht in, der, in den Ranglisten die Plätze hinter uns belegen und schauen, wer würde äh, spielerisch gut passen von der Position her, wer würde auch menschlich ins Team passen, weil äh, die Kommunikation halt essentiell wichtig ist in so einem Team. Und wer ist verfügbar? Und dann geht es genau wie im Fußball darum, äh, wie sind Vertragsmodalitäten, wird möglicherweise eine Ablösesumme sein, ist das für uns zu realisieren und das ist ein sehr langer Prozess und so nimmt das dann seinen Lauf. Gore still alive, I think he went or so. I've been playing games like for a long time. In 2005 or something, I started to play like a lot of CS with Counter Strike Source when I was 15. From then on, on I, I mean, I took a break at some point to focus more on school, but uh, after that, CS was like the game for me to, to play. I started playing Counter Strike when I was like seven, eight years old. I got into Counter Strike through my uh, relatives who showed me the world of the internet and from there on I just explored myself and that's how I got into it. Uh, I got into Counter Strike I think uh, when I was like 16. Uh, I had a girlfriend and I quit my all, all of the hobbies so then I, I needed some something to do and my friends were playing so they introduced me to the game and uh, then I got a bit addicted and here I am. I mean, I, I was never really the kind of guy to have like a dream or I want to do this job or I want to do this when I grow up. But at some point when I was playing 1.6, I did realize like I had something that some other players didn't have that I was better than the players I was usually playing with. And I thought, okay, if I'm going to put a lot of work in this and really, really try my best, then maybe I can do something with it. Yeah, I was hoping to get into like the really good teams and play at the best tournaments. and win tournaments, so I guess you can say it was kind of a dream. Yeah, I'm really happy where I am right now. Um, as a kid, I, I always wanted to be like a pro player, but I didn't really like think of it. I didn't know if I really wanted it, but it kind of happened like just out of the blue. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far and it's really uh, nice to be a, a pro. It is um, one of my dreams. I guess it wasn't like my biggest dream when I was young that uh, I would play Counter Strike uh, as pro because it wasn't so mainstream as it uh, it is nowadays. But uh, for example, when I was in school, I always knew that I have to do something different, and uh, I'm happy that it turned out to be Counter Strike. In first place, I became the leader because we didn't have one, and because I'm the oldest, I'm the most experienced. I played like with good Ingham leaders, and I learned stuff from them. I just try to help my team in the best way and try to do what I need to do for us to win. I mean, I feel like the main thing as the Ingham leader in CSGO is that you have the responsibility what what is being played, in the sense uh, what rounds you're playing or what strategies. I feel like it's also a responsibility to keep everybody in the game, keep everybody motivated and energized to actually win matches. Those are like the most important things that really are important for an game leader. Myself, I would say I'm a quiet person. I like to do my job. I like to like just play Counter-Strike and just do my best. Winning is like my job and that's um, the thing I do best. Yeah, I'm uh, the second youngest player in our team and uh, personally, uh, I think it doesn't matter that much, uh, but obviously the best has it, its saying. Like for example, I started Counter-Strike in 2010 and uh, some of the guys in our team started like 2002. So obviously there's eight years more 
and uh, that means experience but I think everyone is individual person and uh, that's a more important thing for example me and Robin this is our first good team and I think we're doing pretty fine for that but obviously for example Oscar he have longer history and sometimes in uh, some different situations is more ready. I guess everyone is a role model for me in our team, like, but in their own ways. I'm trying to learn from the best part of each player. I'm not really kind of guys looking too much into the future about this and that. I'm just trying to uh, give my best to the team and not make the time in the team useless. I want to make the most out of it. So I hope we're going to work hard. I hope I'm going to keep working hard and I hope that it's going to bring success. To be honest, I didn't plan anything uh, yet uh, about my future in esports. I, I guess I'm gonna play like few more years, and uh, as long as I, I find the spark to compete and travel so much, because that's uh, more exhausting than people might think that there are like three weeks out of one month uh, abroad. But yeah, I, I guess time will tell. We're training in a bootcamp at the moment because uh, it was like vacation period for all the teams and people was not touching mouse at all. I mean, bootcamp is some sort of a specific thing for every team. Every team is planning a different way, and for us, it's just getting in shape and playing as much as we can. Normally, even six days for us is it's like a lot. I would say normally it's not happening for more than four days, and the amount of hours people are putting is much more than they usually put when they're home. Everything here goes much faster since we know um, how we want to do things and we talk over things much faster. Um, there's no miscommunications and if there is, we can just fix them really fast. So it's uh, much easier. And the difference between uh, online practice and bootcamp practice, what we're doing right now downstairs is that uh, on Bootcamp it's uh, always easier to talk with everyone, get everyone involved and it's basically easier to work as a team. A uh, normal day at the Bootcamp, it's quite long days I would say. I mean usually we wake up around 10 or something, have just normal breakfast. We start around 11 with talking about stuff. Um, first couple of days we're like talking for two or three hours to realize again what things we have and what things we need to improve on. And then basically the rest of the day we're going to be playing with like one hour break for dinner till like 11 or 12 in the evening. We come here in the morning, we talk like one or two hour um, theory about what we did wrong yesterday, for example, in practice and what we are going to improve from that and create some new stuff. And then we play uh, like a few games, we have a break and uh, we talk again and then we play again. So we, we basically every morning create new stuff, we talk uh, middle of the day, what's, uh, how we can do it better. And then uh, we do like recap to, uh, tomorrow and uh, that's basically the plan. Next round they exactly the same thing but with more guys. Yeah. We are trying to get as much situations as we can, you know. Not like some specific ones, but as much as we can to be aware which things works and which not, like as much as we can. Because we're also playing already quite a long time, like on the higher level of CS now, we're also making like new stuff because obviously teams are like watching what we're doing. So we need to create new stuff. Obviously we're also watching other teams, so maybe taking something from them. Usually we know our opponents like uh, one or two weeks before, so um, there is some time to prepare for them and obviously we get in personal shape. We're also just training to become a better team, not like only for the next tournament, but we're hoping to play together for a long time. So I wouldn't say it's specifically training all the time for one tournament, it's not like you can only do new stuff at, at the tournament, you need to have like the basics down really good. and. Uh, that's going to help you play really well at tournaments as well.
Well, DreamHack uh, is the first tournament of the season. For us, it means um, some sort of a warm-up tournament to understand where you are right now compared to opposition again, right? To see like which things works for us after bootcamp, right? What we have to fix because practice is practice, but tournament match, it's like totally different storyline. Of course, do our best. We want to win. We want to win really bad, but we're also going to take it as uh, a tournament to really improve on from further. Um, we'll have probably some new stuff to show and teams will come up with new energy or whatever. Um, we'll try to do the same and just um, maybe surprise some people and just try to win. I mean, everybody has like different um, mice and keyb keyboards, especially what they prefer to use because of the shape or for a keyboard, for example, how the keys click. You get used to it, something like that. You, it's really hard to like play with a totally new mouse that has a different shape and the sensor might work different. Chris J has a thing that he takes off some of the keys so he doesn't accidentally hit the, uh, the key that he's not, so, not supposed to hit. For example, like there's a Windows key that makes you like go out of the game and then it can just uh, cause bad stuff in the game, and so that's why he probably takes them off. On my keyboard, I removed the Windows key so I don't press it by accident during a match. And some other keys I'm missing because I smashed the keyboard once and I couldn't find them again. <laughs> I guess most gamers use like mice that are similar to what people use. But uh, for example, keyboard, I use one that's like almost half as small as a normal one because then it's like more easy to position it in a way you want, right? Or if there is limited space at a tournament, you're also not going to have so much problem. You have to play so many hours in the game that, uh, to be better than the opponent. And let's say if you spend 5,000 uh, hours, then you're creating like muscle memory for your hand. And every time if you uh, switch like mouse, for example, you kind of lose it. You need uh, so many hours to like uh, have it. And I think that's why every player have uh, their own hardware. Yeah, I know some players uh, who had a problem with their wrist. And I think that also depends a lot on the mouse and where do you have like uh, the hand on the table. For example, for some people, the table's uh, corner is right in the middle of somewhere here. And that causes like a reaction in the muscles that the blood is not uh, flowing good and uh, stops, for example, the bloodstream. So some players have them, but uh, I don't have to ever stress about those things. I'm doing a lot of cardio, like I'm running and cycling and then I'm lifting with like low weights. But I think the most important thing is that you feel good in your head and you have the balance. So yeah, I think uh, sport is good in general, but you don't need to be like super athlete to play good in Counter-Strike. Everything and um, what you do outside of the game just affects uh, in the game. Uh, I mean, if you have like a bad breakfast or something, you might end up playing bad or I mean, you, you, usually you just try to do your best uh, during the day to play good. In our team, it's like that every player know uh, their own way to feel good the best. I don't eat meat at all, but uh, for example, some players in our team, if you don't give them meat, they will just be mad and uh, not perform. It's just an example, but yeah, we're not following any, any diet. Everyone individually taking care that they feel good every time. Für Mausword selbst wünschen wir uns eigentlich das, was wir uns seit unserer Gründung schon, schon wünschen. Wir wollen für unsere Fans der deutsche Vertreter in der Weltspitze sein. Wir möchten eben sehr guter Repräsentant von der deutschen E-Sports-Community sein. 